Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing sound. Testing sound. Hello, hello. Waiting for the science students. Still waiting for students to log in. Okay, here is. Okay, great. Here is. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, good, good. Uh, creo que usted no estuvo en la clase de ayer, ¿verdad? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, good. Eh, bueno, la clase anterior de la del lunes fue prácticamente lo mismo, de, de product testing. Y la de ayer fue sobre, eh, fue sobre, sobre eh, subject verb agreement. Vamos a practicar un poco sobre eso, ¿ok? Eh, let me just uh, show you my screen just for a minute. Ok, good. By aquí en lo que, lo que hace, en lo, de lo que se trata es el subject verb agreement es sobre, eh, ¿cómo se llama? It, it's, it's about uh, having the verb agree with the subject like this. For example, por ejemplo, usted tiene, usted tiene, eh, tiene sujetos compuestos como estas palabras. Por ejemplo, tiene the first of the decisions. Entonces, la idea es de que este sujeto, the first of the decisions, 
encaje con el verbo. All right? The idea is that they, they match, ¿ok? Que coincidan. Entonces, eh, aquí utilizamos el verbo singular. ¿Por qué utilizamos el verbo singular? Here, the first one, uh, refers to one, porque se refiere solo a uno. Entonces, tenemos que utilizar el verbo en singular. Esto es la forma de tercera persona, de have, has. ¿Ok? Entonces, así funciona. Veamos la siguiente expresión. La siguiente expresión. Uh, one of the good things about working with you is the effort you make to do the job right. So, aquí tenemos one of the things. ¿Ese qué cree usted? ¿Es singular o plural? It's singular. All right. It's singular. Entonces, por lo tanto, le seguiría un verbo en... En singular. En el singular también, que sería es, ¿verdad? Porque utilizamos es para he y en it. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Ahora, en el otro caso que tenemos acá, tenemos este. Some difficult decisions to make in relation to fancy material are about cost and quantity. Aquí tenemos esto. Some difficult decisions. Okay? Some difficult decisions. Y eh, si se fija, aquí tenemos un plural, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿el verbo en qué forma está? Plural. Too. All right, yeah. Yeah, it's in plural, all right? All right, good, good. Now, vamos a ver, vamos a ver otro ejemplo, okay? Tenemos a majority and number take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun, okay? Veamos esta oración. A majority of product developers prefer to use blind tests. <clears throat> By, <clears throat> si se fija acá, tenemos a majority of product developers. Product developers es un solo sujeto, ¿verdad? Y está en plural. Por lo tanto, utilizamos prefer. Porque se refiere a they. Ok. A un plural. Muy bien. Vamos a hacer, vamos a aprovechar estos últimos tres minutos que le quedan a usted para hacer un par de ejercicios. Okay. Uh, hagamos del 1 al 3. Ok. Eh, lea las oraciones en la forma correcta. Read the sentences in their correct form. Please. 1, 2, 3. So here you choose. The one that agrees. Just read the correct form, please. Some of the participants in the testing group have not arrived yet. Okay, some of, yeah, that's good. Continue, please. One of the factors to decide on the best type of test is the characteristics of the product itself. All right, characteristics, all right? Characteristics. Mm -hmm. A number of customers mm -hmm. uh, is satisfied, satisfied with the performance of the new mock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tenemos aquí a number. Ahora, acuérdense que hacemos con a number or a majority. Number. Okay. Nos oh. fijamos en el sustantivo. Okay. ¿Está en singular o en plural? Plural. Ok, so we select. R. R, ok. So That's R, alright, good. So a number of customers are satisfied with the performance. Performance, ok. Performance. Of the new map. Of the new map. Alright, That's good. Ok, eh, el manual se los he puesto en el, en el chat de WhatsApp. 
So, para que si, si usted lo quiere ver, lo puede revisar ahí para practicar la, con, la, con las oraciones que siguen. ¿Ok? Y también ahí hay un link para la, para la, ¿cómo se llama? Para un cuestionario o un, un mini quiz que se puede hacer también para que continúe practicando esto. ¿Ok? okay. All right. Thank you very much for staying. Have a good night. Good night. All right, goodbye. Okay, let's have Claudia. <clears throat> Claudia. Okay, good. Very good. Can you hear me, Claudia? Hi, teacher. Hello? Yes, I hear you. Yes, you can? Okay, great. Very good. So, uh, yes, in your case, uh, is there any topic you would like to talk about in particular? ¿Tiene algún tema en particular que quisiera que, digamos, repasáramos de esta semana o de la anterior? Mm. No. Not necessarily? Okay. All right. Good. Bye. Entonces, uh, vamos a probar algo. Vamos a probar, eh, la semana pasada, trabajamos con Present Perfect. Bueno, la semana antes, antes pasada, por las vacaciones. Eh, trabajamos con Present Perfect, ¿ok? Entonces, uh -huh. le voy a hacer preguntas utilizando el Present Perfect y usted la responde utilizando la forma correcta de Present Perfect. Por ejemplo, uh, let me ask you... Uh, are you single? Uh, this is not in present perfect, but it, it leads us. Are you single or married? I'm married. Uh, okay. Now, how long have you been married? I have been married for two years. Okay. Great. Great. And uh, uh, how long have you worked in the same place? I, I've been work. Mm -hmm. I've been work. I have worked, you say? I have worked mm -hmm. for the same place for about five years. All right. Good, good. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. Great. And, um, and uh, also, let me ask you. Uh, do you have a car? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. Uh, do you have a driving's la uh, but do you know how to drive? No. Not, not yet? Okay, that's good, that's no, good. I... All right, and uh, let me ask you, how many phones have you had? In all my life. Yes? Ah, <laughs> uh, many. I have um, uh, maybe 10 or, or 20 phones. Wow, those are a lot. Me too. Yes, because I have a plan. Oh, I see. And they, uh, they give me the, the, ¿cómo se dice? La, la, la versión más. The newest version. Well, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. The newest version. Okay, they give you the newest version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Great, great, very good. And uh, all right, so it looks like you manage. You manage uh, the, the, the present perfect. Okay, very good. Um, now, just a few questions on... Uh, on a subject and verb agreement, okay? Let's keep testing you, all right. So, first one, uh, are you looking at my screen? Yes. Yes, okay, let's see. Uh, please read sentences four through six in their correct form, please. Four, mm -hmm. the first of the suggestions I want to implement is, sorry, sorry. 
I want to implement uh, is the design of the label. Okay, that's good. Good, very good. Continue, please. A majority of testers and your testers have pointed out the need to make our product lighter. Great, great, very good. And uh, and uh, next, please. Yeah, number six. A number of comments suggests that the fragrance of the candle is the best characteristic. Okay. Great, great, very good, very good. So uh, now uh, let's see. Just asking you, right? Just testing. Uh, do you remember what this means? It's in the chat. Yes. Yeah. What does it yes. stand for? Oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 the word. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you know the word in Spanish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the S. Ah, mm -hmm. Strength. Yeah. Strength. And the opposite, weakness. Weaknesses. Yeah, good. Opportunities and... And... Three. Yeah. Threat? No. Threat. Threat. Yeah. Threat. Threat. Yeah. That's the one. I don't remember what threat means. Uh, okay, that's okay. So yes. threats are possible, uh, possible uh, dangers. Okay. And dangers. Yeah, yeah, they're like possible dangers or or risks, risks. that you can have because of competition. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. That's pretty much how what what it is, what it means. Yeah. So threats. That is it. Yes. And uh, good. Uh, do you have any any other questions? Any other question regarding uh, vocabulary? No. Um, uh, I think uh, I mm -hmm. like I like very much the way you participate in class also because. Okay. You, you participate a lot and it, and it helps it mm -hmm. helps you to be more fluent so you keep it up all right i feel i i uh, me falta fluidez ajá ajá exacto no sé por qué quizás soy muy insegura al hablar Tengo, siento que tiendo que voy a equivocarme algo así ajá pero fíjese que yo veo que es más miedo que otra cosa por <laughs> Porque estructura bien las cosas, o sea, y cuando son errores, cuando comete errores, pues todos cometemos y, y son pocos, o sea, no son, no son, no son grandes, grandes errores que digamos que hay, parece que ha arrastrado desde el básico, sino uh -huh. que son pequeños, o sea, es más, o sea, son como cuando usted intenta decir una palabra nueva, que se ve uh -huh. un poco complicada, o está tratando de utilizar un, un, una forma, una estructura nueva. Que, o sea, son normales. Siento que no debería de tener miedo porque hace bien, hace bien su trabajo, pues. Uh -huh. Entonces, sígale, sígale. Keep it up, all right? Good. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much, care. Claudia. You have a good night. All right. Thank you, bye. Goodbye. So, I'll be married then. Waiting for a participant to join. Waiting for participant to join. Mary is in. 
Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, now you're mute. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. So, all right. Good. Good. All good. So, uh, is there uh, so far? Is there any topic you want to discuss or you need help with? Um. No. Uh, maybe for me, it's more practice um, to talk. All right. Um, because I think I understand, but I'm shy. Shine is that correct? Uh, uh huh. For talk and and I think I need more um or read uh in English. Maybe it's a topic, but the class it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great like it so yeah we can have a, we can have just a little chat you know in, in in instead right hey we use also the word chat for speaking okay uh -huh. so mm -hmm. it's not okay. only it's not only there in the computer but it's only is also speaking so yes so how was your day what did you do today oh, i worked all day um and I do exercise approximately on, on 6 p.m. All right. And then I cooked the dinner. Yes. And, and then uh, the class, uh, the uh, English. The mm -hmm. English class. Oh. English class. Yes, yes, English class. Mm -hmm. Great. And... Uh, how long do you exercise? How long? Uh, in, in, in the day or every day? Or? Yeah, like, like how long is your, is your session? An hour, two hours, 15 uh, minutes? 30? An hour. An hour? Yes, okay. yes. Uh -huh. And uh, are you following a program or, or it's just free? No, actually, my husband is in training, personal training. Oh, uh -huh. personal training. Yes, yes, and and then it's my personal training. Okay, that's even better. Oh, yes, yes. That's it's a cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, it's cheaper. Good. Yeah. Good. And that's a great advantage of having a trainer. Very good. Good. Uh -huh. and, uh, are you training anything in particular, like uh, Pilates or yoga? Or... Yes, yes. Um, we practice uh, CrossFit. Okay. Interesting. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh -huh. But in, in my case, it's modified because I have a, a problem in, a, um, in the, I don't know, say, columna in the in my back yeah that's in your back yes 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 uh-huh uh-huh yes uh, in my back mm -hmm. okay good so uh it, it, you have a, a kind of custom program right yes custom. yes if every day change uh the program mm -hmm. okay all right mm -hmm. to yeah uh, to uh more um uh, strong and yeah good strength uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. strength uh -huh. and and do strength yes strength and do um as I, I don't know how do you say um, uh, um for example run and and uh, step on the box. Um, oh, okay. I think uh -huh. isn't that cardio? Yes, cardio. Yes. Uh -huh. Cardio. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, cardio and strength. Uh huh. And strength. All right. So some days you work on strength, and other days you work on cardio, right? 
de depend, but depend uh, uh -huh. and, and many, many days you practice both. Okay, mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes. And uh, do you now let's do this. All right. Sometimes also in conversation, it's the to keep a conversation going you have to ask questions okay now i will talk about my training program and okay. you ask me questions okay so uh today i i worked out for an hour i i exercised for an hour um i what mm -hmm. what exercise do you um do you do mm -hmm. uh yeah there's the yeah, do exercise. Uh, I uh -huh. I work uh, with dumbbells, dumbbells. Uh -huh. what yes, I work yes, with dumbbells, yes. and uh, I have a a six day program. Okay, uh huh, mm -hmm. uh huh. But uh, uh, you um, look at the internet, or you yes. have a oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I follow a program, uh, a YouTuber. Ah yeah. Yeah, he, and uh, it's uh, his channel is Barbarian Buddy, Barbarian oh. Buddy. You know, it's it's funny. It's uh -huh. funny because uh, because he trains with small dumbbells, like 20, 25 pounds, thirty pounds, uh -huh. and uh, I can. But feel it's he it's heavy, no? Yeah, it, the dumbbell. Uh, yeah, I feel the pump. I feel that pump. It, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's only eight minutes. Eight minute eight. video. Yeah. Uh huh. It's an eight uh -huh. minute video. I follow the routine. But one ascension or 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 it's more ses session. Sessions? No, it's only it's only one a day. Well, uh -huh. I watch the video twice. I mean, I watch and do the uh -huh. exercise twice ah okay okay that okay. eight minute video twice but it's a killer workout <laughs> it's a it's a killer workout it's really it's a cardio too mm, no it's no. like muscle muscle based like mm -hmm. uh, sometimes i work today for example today was was my lower body day lower body and abs so uh -huh. i worked on my lower body Lower body uh -huh. is legs, okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Leg, uh -huh, uh -huh. Legs, aquí se va a aprender los músculos, mire. Legs and uh, hams, uh, hamstrings. Que estos son hamstrings. como los... Hamstrings. Yeah, hamstrings are in the back of your legs. Like the, here's the front. I, I, uh -huh. In the back. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's hamstrings. And uh, okay. you also have the quads. Quads, they call it this one, quads. Quads is the front part mm -hmm. of your legs. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, also you have, uh, I worked on my calves. Do you understand? Well, calves. Okay. No. The singular is calf. Una. It's Cal the pantorillas, calf. Ah, oh. <laughs> really? Calf? No, uh, no, never calf. heard of you. Y el plural se dice calves, okay? Calves, okay, uh-huh. So it was my, my, my leg, my leg day. Days, uh-huh. Yeah, and really tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. and tomorrow, uh, uh, it's, um, tomorrow you have a, ah, uh, heavy, um, dolor, pain? No. Yeah. Ache, ache, body ache, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Ache. Uh -huh. um, like the the pain you f you feel after your routine is called body ache. Así okay. Dice, al, al, como al, al, al dolor que se siente a la, a la recuperación, ¿verdad? Ah, como el estómago ache. Ajá, ajá. Ah, ok. No sabía que era para todo. Ajá, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. Not, not para todo, pero para eso uh -huh. sí es. Head, head cake, headache. Right? right? Headache. Ajá. Headache. Uh -huh. headache, stomach ache, body ache. Yes, I'm learned in English, but 
I don't know, maybe <laughs> I, it's a few years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We sometimes forget. We sometimes yes. forget it. Yeah. So that is that is what I what what I feel. Well, I feel it right now. Maurita, <laughs> Feeling me. I imagine you. Yeah. Yes. And I want to like stretch a little bit and lie down all day. It's a really heavy day. The leg day is my heaviest day. What about you? What's your heaviest workout day? Uh, it's strange. Strength. Yeah. All right. Well, cardio, I didn't like it before. Mm -hmm. Before. Um, I like it, but now I didn't like it. I prefer um, um, <laughs> um, como um, ay, como decir, um, when you work in the um, um, in the part of the body uh-huh uh, okay so muscle training i guess yeah, yes yes muscular, right? uh -huh. like uh -huh, muscle uh -huh. training yeah uh-huh i now i like it because for example uh one day we work uh bicep or mm -hmm. with a uh, tricep or back um yeah back back uh-huh okay. and uh, mix um abs Mm -hmm. And other day, uh, you work cardio with uh, legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We finish. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's it's just a text. A text I'm receiving here. Who I don't know who's talking. <laughs> I don't know. I just received a text. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's okay. So yes, sorry about it. Uh, so in the, so you feel like some days are heavier, right? Uh, yes. I do abs as well. I do abs on my leg on my leg day. I, uh -huh. I I do abs as well. So today I did lower body. I did legs, calves, and abs. So, okay. After that, it's I do two sets of abs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It might be a little heavy, might be mm -hmm. a little heavy, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Yes, I like it because I think it's a um um less uh stress. For yeah. me, for, for the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it does. And, uh, and it, it helps you feel better about yourself. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. You feel better uh -huh. about yourself. Like and you eat, and you eat uh, with a uh, free... <laughs> diet plan? Well, uh, yeah. I, yes, but mm -hmm. yes, I, I, I do... Um, like a paleo diet okay that's good uh-huh i i i don't i don't eat um um bread and tortillas okay. only only maybe um two days in the week mm -hmm. all right good good that's great uh, my 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 girlfriend also follows uh, uh, that diet. I think they uh, she only eats uh, tortillas and, and and bread and and junk food only one day a week, uh -huh. once a week. Like uh -huh. Friday is her her. I don't know how she calls it. Like I think a break. Uh huh. No, is her name is uh, uh, his name is um. Cheap, uh, yeah, cheap day, I think. Uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, so yes. that day she eats whatever she wants, whatever, like whatever she wants a big hamburger or, or yes, Mexican yes, torta yes. from I, the street. 
that but only that day all the other days she she has uh she has more nutritious meals uh-huh mm -hmm. uh-huh yes yeah. it's important mm -hmm. yes yes i i don't follow a diet plan to be honest uh-huh uh-huh but i i have uh cut down para decir que uno ha reducido algo utiliza esa palabra cut down Cut down. Have, yeah, cut down. I have cut down on. Y siempre va seguido de on. Cut down on uh, carbs and carbohydrates. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I have cut mm -hmm. down on carbs. So before I used to eat two tortillas. Now I uh -huh. eat one. Okay. And in the, in the in in the day. Yes. Yes. In the in at lunch. At uh -huh. lunch. And probably one in the evening too, but before I uh -huh. ate two in the two. two in the in every meal, two at lunch and two uh, two in at dinner. But I changed, I changed because I don't grow muscle, or uh -huh. I, yes. only yes. I only grow yes. belly. I only grow belly. I know people that eat a lot and they're a little chubby and all their all their body is chubby. My body is not like that. My body grows only in the belly. Yeah, <laughs> only belly. So I have to be careful with my diet and my exercise. Never stop. Never yes, stop. yes, to. it's important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. So you see, this is how you have a, a casual casual Ajá. conversation you just keep it going all right and ask questions so if you look in the moment in the in the hablando de algo le saca una pregunta y así es como se se lleva una conversación y así es como se va eh, construyendo o digamos se va creando la fluidez uh -huh. okay okay perfecto uh -huh. conversaciones uh -huh. casuales libres de estrés y todo all right okay Good. okay Good. thank you so it was nice chatting with you today maria i hope you have a good night thank you thank you all right see you good tomorrow. night thank you see you tomorrow okay all bye right. goodbye all right next participant is not available today so we'll just wait and upload the video as well. waiting for next participant to join.
waiting for a next participant to join. Waiting for the next participant to join. Waiting for next participant to join. In the following minutes, we will watch a, one of the suggested videos regarding uh, product development. grams of our chipotle pepper and adobo base that is the um, part of our pepper base for our um, chipotle Mexican um, style hot sauce. The poblano still has a little bit of heat but it actually tones down that chipotle flavor and that overwhelming spice to a more um, warm and kind of interesting flavor instead of being overpowering. That's the beauty of food science, is that you can do both. You can be an artist and you can be technical at the same time. Yep, uh, we're hoping to do it in a squeeze bottle, like a plastic squeeze bottle. So, you know, we can't have too large of a particle size, otherwise it'll clog and get stuff. All right, so we'll hand it all out, take off our rocks and hairnets, and then we'll line up to start. Good? Sure. Okay, we got this. We have a brand new product from our lab today for you called Abrasa, a slow and steady burn. A spicy chipotle chili based sauce. We wanted to make a product for us. We wanted to make a product for our friends. We wanted to make a product that was going to be something that could be on the shelf for a long time. You really talked about millennials and that's a huge, huge, huge buzzword <laughs> right now. And you're kind of the first group that really brought that out. Rich, smoky, chipotle, yes. kick in the mouth. <laughs> that was awesome. That was very nice. That was perfect. Yeah, it's too thick. Up. I think, um, 
this is like chili paste almost instead of <laughs> yeah. like a sauce. Mm -hmm. They started out on a small scale and it worked fine, but as often happens when you scale up from just a bench top or a kitchen scale to a much larger scale, stuff happens. It'll be okay. Yeah. It still tastes good. If we had more time, if we had more money. <laughs> and, that's, and that's important to us is that if something doesn't go right, uh, we challenge them to tell us why. And, and that's a learning experience for them to, to be able to, to say this didn't work quite right. We won't, we have suspicion of why it may not work right, but they have to tell us. Good one, guy. Stop. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we learned a lot of lessons. I mean, like, even, even just like processing and budgeting constraints and not having enough ingredients to be able to like properly scale up. A lot of the problems we encountered, people encounter in industry, and I was just talking to some industry folks. They're like, yeah, we do this, only like it takes us a year <laughs> or two, or you know, we have recipes that we haven't even put on the shelf yet that we still want to put on the market. You know, especially with the squeeze top, uh, very elegant presented on the plate. Um, still like the heat, I like it, very good. It was pretty spicy, and I liked it. Um, I don't know if I would get a whole bowl of it, but I could really see it being used as an accent sauce or incorporated with other sauces just to give that kick. It was really good. It's done. The deed is done. I have a feeling that when I walk into a job, I'm going to be more fully prepared than anyone else to be able to do a research and development job because I took this class. It was the funnest class I've ever taken. I mean, like, the professors set this class up for success, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I'm in food science, man. I mean, I love this stuff. My name is Melanie Lang and I am the director of CBase, which is an entrepreneurship center at the University of Guelph. For 10 years now, I have been involved with the interdisciplinary product development course, whereby we have food science, business and nutrition students who work together to create new food products and accompanying business plans for industry clients. What that means essentially is that it gives an opportunity for the clients to engage with a soon to be graduating cohort of, of students. Um, they get an opportunity to share some business challenges with the students, um, approach some innovative new food ingredients and processes to do uh, food product development. And the students get a hands-on learning opportunity and an opportunity to engage with businesses from our local community. In product development, we start out doing a little bit of brainstorming, coming up with some unique ideas. After that, we do some market research to see if our idea is appropriate for the target market. And from that point on, you will be mixing and processing your product as you would be on a commercial scale. So you could make these bench top samples. And from there, uh, you would do some consumer sensory on your uh, your bench top samples. So you can send out advertisements throughout the uh, university for people to come and taste your product. And based on the results of their liking of your product, you can kind of make adjustments and reformulate and that is what we're seeing here today. For instance, if you're taking the tomato, uh, you would turn that into a ketchup or a sauce. So it's everything from the start there, from farm to fork, we say. So there's everything, the microbiology of it, the safety of it, as well there's all the processing aspects, so all the machines and uh, tools you're going to use to process an agricultural product into a finished product as well. I'm Francis, and I'm uh, the co-founder of Yoso. Um, I'm a graduate from University of Guelph, and I graduated in 1998. We had an idea, and we thought it would be a good choice for health-conscious consumer. Uh, it was not a really good prototype, what we came up with, um, but we perfected it, 
uh, afterwards and we started our own business in 2001. Right now we are a manufacturer, we are a small family business specialized in manufacturing and developing um, dairy free culture products. We're also branching out into coconut products, uh, almond and cashew products. Uh, we're actually one of the leading brands uh, right now in the country. I think I realized what, what I've learned um, years after I graduated from university. It had benefited me a lot uh, because a lot of the principles, concepts um, that I've learned from university are still um, the things I do every day. Hi and welcome to our new unit on new food products. Welcome. Today's lesson is about adjective clauses. Basically, there are six kinds of adjective clauses, and they're all defined by the markers that they have. I've written a couple examples here on the board. Uh, the person that I saw was tall. Now, you notice in this first example, I have my independent clause, the person was tall. But that's not enough information about person for you to know who I'm talking about. So I need to add these three words right after person to tell you which person I'm talking about. The person that I saw, not the person that I was talking to or the person who was sleeping. I'm talking about the person that I saw. So that I saw actually gives more information about person. These words here that I saw are called an adjective clause. Every adjective clause in English has a marker, and I put that in blue here, a subject in green, and a verb in red. So marker, subject, and verb. And as I said before, they give more information about a person, just like an adjective does, because I could say the kind person. Kind is an adjective that would tell you more information about the person also. Adjective clauses are always more than one word, and you know a clause is, is a group of words that has a subject and a verb inside. Here's another example I put here. The bicycle which he bought was red. My independent clause is the bicycle was red. But that's not enough information for you to know which bicycle I'm talking about. So I added this adjective clause here to tell you which bicycle I'm talking about. So this all gives more information about bicycle. What bicycle? The bicycle which he bought. Uh, was read. So, so far I've introduced that and which, but there are many more markers that I want to show you. Uh, the second marker is who. So if I put who here, I can actually substitute it in place of that. Now there are some people who also use the word whom, which is actually grammatically correct here. However, very, very few people use the word whom. Most people just say who or that. So you can say the person who I saw was tall or the person that I saw was tall. That and who are used for people. The bicycle which he bought was red. I can also say the bicycle that he bought was red. So which and that are used for things. The bicycle that he bought was red. Now, besides this, I've, I've introduced that there are markers, there are subjects, and there are verbs. However, sometimes the marker can also be the subject. Let me show you one of those. How about if I say, uh, the person that saw, that saw me. The person that saw me was tall. Now, that is the subject of saw. So who saw me? That saw me. So this is the marker and the subject of that verb at the same time. 
uh, for this one, the bicycle which which was which was which was nearby nearby the bicycle which was nearby was red so which is the subject of was as well as being the marker for was so so far we've had who that and which let's look at three more over here on this side of the board I'll put an example um, I know a person I know a person whose whose brother won the lottery now this person didn't didn't win the lottery but his brother won the lottery. Maybe I should put his in because I'm putting all the markers in blue. Let's do whose, W-H-O-S-E. Whose brother won the lottery? Because this person's brother won the lottery. So it's not him that won the lottery. It is his brother that won the lottery. So when you see any sort of possessive like his, her, or their, T-A-G-I-R, then those become whose. Whose brother won the lottery? I know a person whose brother won the lottery. So all of this, whose brother won the lottery, is more information about person. Another good adjective clause. Now one thing you have to remember about whose is that the word that comes right after is the word that belongs. So this is the person's brother. The brother belongs to the person. So after whose, you need to always have the word that belongs. So you'd say, uh, whose car was stolen? whose teacher is nice. You'd have to have all of the, you have to have the noun after the word whose. The next marker is where. So I'll give you an example with where. Uh, that's, that's the, that's the store where he works. So where, another marker, this is more information about store. That's the store. What store? That's the store where he works. So this adjective clause gives more information about store. Where, marker, he, subject, works, verb. And of course, there's a period at the end. That's the store where he works. And the last one is about time. Say that's, not blue, black. Oh, how about if I do? I'll always remember, I'll always remember the day, I'll always remember the day when we met. I'll always remember the day when we met. When is the last marker I'm introducing today? When? We met, notice there's a, sub, there's a marker, there's a subject and a verb, and all of this gives more information about day. So one of the things you've noticed about adjective clauses is that they always follow the word that they describe. It gives more information about day. Whose brother won the lottery? More information about person. Uh, which was nearby? More information about bicycle. That saw me? More information about person. So they always go right after the person that they describe. Now there's a lot more to this grammar, so make sure that you study this page and then do the exercise that follows. Bye for now. Students, welcome back to another class. Today, toca gramática. Y es que hay mucha confusión entre las palabras which, who y that. Entonces, al acabar esta clase, vas a ser un experto.
Defining Gravity Story, que son los que estamos con los... Apparently no other students joined, so session is over. Dismissed. Good night.